In this video, I'm going to be working on the University of Waterloo's CCC, Canadian Computing Competition, Junior 5 S2 Modern Art Problem from 2021. All right, so basically, I'm going to just summarize what's happening in this one. They're going to give you M and N, so the first two digits of the inputs, and that's going to specify the dimensions of a grid. So it's going to be the length and the width. And then basically this grid is considered to be all black to start and you have an artist and they're going to paint either a whole row or a whole column and then if the if the cell was previously black it will turn to gold and if it was gold it will turn back to black and so you can see here you have a three by three and then the next input is going to tell you how many commands they're going to give you. So, so the first command is going to be, uh, so they're giving you a two. And then here they're saying you're going to paint a row. Which row? Well, you're going to paint row one. And so you can see here, initially the whole, uh, the whole cell or the whole grid would have been black. But because you painted row one, then the top one would be GGG to make it all gold. And then the next command is column one. And what that's going to do is it's going to paint down this first column. Now, there's a few tricks here. Um, first of all, because they're saying one, but actually with arrays, they actually mean zero. So we're going to have to subtract one from that, from whatever that input is. Okay, but getting back to it, it changed, all of these are going to change. But because this was a G, it's going to turn into a B, which is why it's a B here. And then because these are Bs here, then that's why they became Gs here and here. All right, and then at the end, you have to output how many G's there are basically in the whole puzzle. All right, so, okay, so there's a few things about this. Okay, so first one is, like I said, the uh, we're going to obviously model this with an array, but the commands that they give you this one, right, is going to be uh, sometimes problematic because that they mean the first row, but actually when we're working with the array, we mean index zero. Okay, so we, um, so there's just some different ways we can handle that. We can actually just always subtract one from the input, or what we could do is we could just instantiate an array that's one larger than we need and then just ignore the first row and the first column. I feel like that might be the better way to do it, just because overall, I think you would have less overhead. Um, so fewer commands to set up the array and this just ignore that section rather than doing the repeated addition and subtraction operations. But I'm not really 100% sure on that. That's just my overall sense of it. Okay. Now, the other thing is that they're telling you in the five mark problem, they're going to, the M&M &M dimensions could be uh, less than or equal to five million. So, you know, they're going to be equal to five million. Okay. And then the number of commands, K, is, um, is going to be a million. So, if you imagine, like, even if you just painted the same row, okay, so you painted the same row and it's five million length, that would mean 500, five million uh, flip commands, right, um, times a million, right, which is a lot, all right, so 5 million times a million, you know, that's like, what, 10 to the 12, so that's a lot of commands, and there's only a two-second processing time for this problem, and so if you actually have to do that, then it, there's going to be an issue. Okay, the other thing is that you have to know that if it's a G, then you got to flip it to a B, and if there's a B, you're going to flip it to a G, and so I think what a lot of people would try and do is that they would initially try and set up a char array, okay a character array and then they would just ask and say like okay if this is a g then flip it to a b and then in another statement saying if else if it's a b then flip it back to a g all right i'm not going to do that okay so the thing is with this problem is that this situation the st the status of each grid of each cell um can only be uh, um, it's, it's a binary condition. It's either a G or a B. So instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Boolean and I'm going to say a B is false and a G is true. All right. And that way we can use that uh, to basically do some easy flipping. All right. And a final condition that we have to think about, or not really a condition, but just something to think about is that, look, if they give you the same command twice, it's the same as if they didn't give you the command. 
right? So like, for instance, if I tell you to flip R2 and then later on, I ask you to flip R2 again, it's the same as if you didn't flip R2 at all. And so if you actually give me the command to flip R2 like 20 times, it actually, I could just ignore all those times because it's an even number of times. Now, if you told me 21 times, then I would actually only need to flip R2 just one time to be the same because the first 20 times would be all negations of each other. And then after that, it would only have to do it the one time. Now, the other thing you have to know is that when you do this sort of operation, the order of the operations doesn't matter. So if you just do all the R flips at once, like first, and then all the C flips, it actually doesn't make any difference to the outcome of the problem. So with that in mind, let's go to the code and see how we can use that to our advantage here. Okay, so we're going to start off here, and we are going to just start with our M and N. So int m is equal to zero, n is equal to zero. Okay, and we're just gonna take in c in m and c in n. All right, so those are, our, uh, those are our initial dimensions. Okay, now what we're gonna do here is in the large, I'm like I'm thinking about the largest problem they're gonna give. Now, if they're gonna give you like a million commands, like what are the odds that they're gonna give you like all different commands. Probably not. They're probably not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually record the commands. So I'm going to do that in a hash table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a boolean array called R commands. Okay, and I'm going to make it size M plus one. Okay, and what that's going to do is it's going to set up an array. Okay, so that, let me just see here so I can say for int x is equal to one, x is less than or equal to m. So weird using arrays like that, um, because usually you start from zero and go less than m, but okay. And then we can say our commands at x is equal to false, okay? Now, when they give me an r command, if they say r5, what I'm going to do is go to this r commands array at 5, and then I'm going to set that to be uh, true. And then if it's false, I'll set it. If it's true, I'll set it to be false. If it's false, I'll set it to be true. All right, so that way we can we can get rid of the duplication of commands. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for the c commands as well. Okay, so c commands, um, and that's going to have to be n plus 1. Okay, and I will need another another one of these here. So for int y is equal to one, y is less than or equal to n, and then y plus plus, and c commands at y is equal to false, just to set them all up like that. Okay. All right, so let's just see here. Oh, there's a colon when it should be a semicolon. Okay, and um, let's just run it. It should run, but it's not really going to do anything. So whatever, 5.5, five, five, okay. All right, good. So everything's working so far. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to read in all those commands. So we're going to say int k, and that's a parameter given to us in the problem. So c in k, and that's going to be how many different commands they plan on giving us. All right, now each command... So they're going to give us those commands. And so we're going to say for int, uh, I don't know, q is equal to zero, zero, q is less than k, q plus plus. Okay, so we're just going to make a loop that's going to run that many times. Now, for every time we run this loop, we're going to need to read in a char, so a char letter, and then we're going to also read, need a number, so int number. Okay, so we're going to start off by reading in the letter. Okay, and then we'll read in the number, okay, like so. Okay, and then we can ask, you can say, if the letter was equal to a capital R, then what we can do is we can actually then say um, the R commands at the number is equal to not the R commands at number. Okay, now it's kind of a weird way of doing this, but this way we actually avoid the if statement, right? And all we're doing is flipping a single bit because a Boolean is essentially just a single bit that's either true or false. So we're just saying, this is the same as saying, if it was zero, then make it a one, and if it's a one, make it a zero, right? So just make it what it's not, 
Okay, so that's just an easy way of doing, of combining all those different operations all together. Now, we don't need another if statement because if it's not R, then it must be, uh, must be a C. So then we can say the C commands at number is equal to not C commands at number. Okay, like so. All right, and so that is actually the, um, that will set up our whole, our, our commands grid and our C command, or our commands array and our C commands. So row commands, column commands. Now, what that means now is in these two uh, lists, I have a list of all the unique commands. Okay, so anything that's a zero would have been said, uh, said twice, right? Because if it started off all as false, it means it's, it was all false. If you say it once, it turns to true. If you say it twice, it turns to false. If you say it three times, it goes true again. If you say it four times, it goes false again. So anything, any command that was uh, that was given an even number of times will be false, and any command that was given an odd number of times will be true. All right. And then, if you recall earlier, I said that the order of the commands actually doesn't even matter. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our grid here. So we're going to say grid m plus one, right? And we're going to say n plus one. Okay, we're going to make the grid just one bigger so that when we access the letter uh, or the number, like when they say row one, they actually mean row zero because it's index zero. So what we're doing is we're just saying, okay, we're going to make it one bigger so we don't have to like always subtract the one, All right? So, okay, so we're going to say uh, for that, and then we'll just go four int x is equal to one, x is less than or equal to m x plus plus, okay? And we're just going to initialize this grid right now, okay? So because otherwise it will be just a mess. It'll just be basically like just random data. So we'll say int y is equal to one, y is less than or equal to n y plus plus, and then we will say grid at x y is equal to false. Okay. Now at this point, the entire grid should be all zeros. Okay. So. Let's go take a look here. Okay, and um, for instance, if I just said here, C out grid x, y plus a space. Okay, so something like this. Okay, and then C out in line here. This should print out the grid. Okay, and okay, so let's see here. Now, for instance, in the sample problem they give us, they give us a three by three, and they say there's two commands, and they say one is R1, and then the second one is C1, right? And so, um, it actually, this is nothing, like nothing happened here because only, we only instantiated the grid, right? So it's just everything is zero. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, next thing we're going to do is run through these commands and we're going to see that all the, these, this row should flip and this column should flip, but because this element flipped twice, then essentially nothing should happen. All right. So, okay, let's keep going. Okay. So we've now instantiated the whole grid to be false. Okay, so everything's zeros. That's good to start. Uh, actually, that's just test code, so I don't need that. I'll just run it here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for int x is equal to 1. x is less than or equal to m. x plus plus. Okay, now what I'm going to say here is I'm going to say if um, r commands. Okay, at x. Now, what I want to say is if r commands at x is equal to true, but since r commands is either true or false anyways, it would be like saying true is equal to true, and we're actually just introducing an extra operation, right? Because true is equal to true is still going to evaluate to be true, and so we can just say if it's true, right? So if it says true, then that means that that was a unique command that was given an odd, or was given an odd number of times. So then what we can do is we can say for int y is equal to one. So basically we're gonna go, the, the row is set at x and we have to go to every y within that row. So y is less than or equal to n. Okay, and y plus plus. Okay, and then what we can say is grid at, because the x is set, x at y is equal to not grid at x and y. 
All right, and that should negate the whole the whole row. Okay, and similarly, we have to do the same thing for the columns as well. So for the column commands, so it's essentially the same thing. So we're going to say int y is equal to one, y is less than or equal to n, um, y plus plus. Okay, and if that's so weird. Okay, that's really annoying. Okay, so if uh, C commands, so if the column commands at X, okay, if we can then say for int X, so we're just gonna flip things around here a bit, is equal to one, X is less than or equal to M, X plus plus, okay. Okay, and then we're just gonna say grid at x, y again is equal to not grid at x, y. So whatever, it will be suddenly become whatever it wasn't before. Okay, and then here we're gonna print out the grid. So let's go test this out again. Okay, I uh, got an error here. Oh, uh, this should be a y here. Okay, and I believe that looks right, so. Okay. Okay. Let's test this out. So three, three, two, R one, C one. All right. There you go. Okay. Now here's the thing. Uh, let's go to the second one. I'm just going to pull that up off screen. Just give me a second. Okay. So in the second uh, sample they gave us was four, five, seven. Okay. And then it was R, R three, C1, C2. Okay, this is actually what tipped me off here because they gave R2 and then R2 again. And I was like thinking, well, if they gave me the same command twice, couldn't I just ignore it? And for instance, like then I was like, does the order really matter? So, okay, so C1, C1, those would get negated. And then R4, okay. And that actually matches the grid exactly as it should. Okay, now here's the thing. What if I change the order? Okay, so for instance, like, so four, five, seven, okay, and I just change the order. So let's go um, all the C's first. So if I say C1, C2, C1, okay, and then I can just go the R's, let's say R's in reverse order. So R4, R2, R2, and R3. Okay, you notice it's exactly the same. Like the, the order of the commands actually doesn't matter. Okay, and you can see what we've done here is our program would have would have negated these both these C1s and both these R2s. So I think that, that should make things quick. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do here is we are going to modify this display code Okay, so that it will uh, it will just count the number of uh, true items there. So what we're going to do is go to the grid. We're going to say int g count. Oops, int g count. Okay, and set it to be zero to start. And then in here. Okay, so we're going to use instead of displaying to the screen, all we're going to do is just say if the grid at x, y. Now we could say if grid x, y is equal to true, but we don't need to because it will either be true or false anyways. Then, so if it is, if it is true, then g count plus plus. And then at the end, we can just say see out the g count. And that should be it. Okay, so I'm gonna compile this and we'll throw it into the grader and see how we do. Okay, so you can see what we have here is this is the code in there. So this is the code as I've written it and we're gonna retest. So correct, correct. You can see it's actually happening quite quick. Okay, so 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Here's the big ones. Okay, so these ones are, we. these are the big ones. So 0 0.3, that's good. There you go. 15 out of 15 or is it 15 points? Yeah, all 15 points on the, on junior five. There we go. So anyways, that's it uh, for the junior problems. Uh, if I have time, I'll work on the senior problems as well. Thanks for watching. See you next video.